Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank and a stunning turn of events. It is raining in England and as you can see the Swin and Down Swiddly Poopers are still seventh but we're only five points out of first so nothing is impossible this early in the season. Um, today I'm going to talk about whether Augustus Waters is a manic pixie dream boy. Sorry I keep burping. Um, but you know what that's part of the show. Uh, whether Augustus Waters is a manic pixie dream boy um, but let me tell you about the starting lineup first. We have Green Eggs in Fodringham, our ends in Wesley Crusher, Fodringham in goal, of course. Bandolovsky is out on the left, he who shall not be named out on the right. Um, we've got a judge, and then of course, of course, of course, up front, John Green, Leroy Williamson. The striking partnership that, um, oh wait, no, I think I'm starting John Green and Andy Rooney again in an attempt to recreate the magic of the Southampton game. So, um... I get asked this question a lot. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think because I do, um, you know, because all of my books are written by me, that's, that a lot of people are always looking for similarities in them, or, or particularly um, people who uh, sort of criticize my work, which I think is, uh, there's plenty to criticize about it. Um, it doesn't, uh, that's not something that keeps me up at night or bothers me or anything. But um, a lot of people say like, oh, Augustus Waters is a manic pixie dream boy he's just like the female version of one of one of the characters from the other novels like Alaska or, or Margo or whatever um, I don't exactly take ex exception to that but I do disagree with it um, I don't think that um, that Gus is really very much like those characters at all I mean certainly he starts out I think as uh, you know as most romantic leads do in not just um, novels by me but novels by most people um, whether it's I don't know Jeffrey Eugenides or um, Jody Pico or whomever um, he starts out as uh, like very sort of improbably uh, uh, charming and precocious and quick on his feet oh speaking of quick on their feet how about these swoodly poopers not being quick on their feet is it because we are wearing blue the color of surrender and cowardice I don't know um, but I didn't want to wear red because red on red violence is a tragic tragic thing so um yeah, I, I didn't, um, you know, like, I, I wanted him in the beginning to seem sort of very, oh, that was coming. To seem cooler than cool, you know, to seem like cooler than is, than, than is possible. Um, and indeed, he is cooler than is possible. I think in a lot of ways, Gus is one of those guys who, like, uh, the first time you meet him, you're like, that guy's amazing. And then the second time you meet him, you're like, that guy only has five funny stories about himself. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to capture someone like that because I find, them, I find those people very interesting, those people who are sort of very performed in their, um, in their lives, like they have, you know, that they have those performative qualities, but, you know, a lot of times I think their, their charisma is, you know, is somewhat superficial, and certainly that's the case with, with Gus, um, and, you know, the that's sort of the journey that he makes from Augustus Waters to Gus Waters, from someone who is this sort of like, oh, you just needed to turn, my friend, larger-than-life character, um, who is like, you know, oh, so handsome and oh, so cool and oh, so sure of himself, to someone who is, you know, weak and, and uh, frail and, um, you know, just as vulnerable as any other human. Um, that is the novel to me that's what the novel's about and so i couldn't very well have that story unless i had the first part oh my gosh you need better first touches i couldn't have that that story unless i had the first part of showing him as this you know cool super cool guy um but eventually of course you come to learn that he's much more complicated than that oh <laughs> he's big he's tough he has a brilliant puff other john green other john green wasn't much the keeper could do about that. You can touch it with your hand, but that will only redirect the direction it is going into the goal. He's going to score. It's just whether he breaks your hand in the process. It's 1-1. The Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers are coming from behind against the Burra that is in the middle. We can do this. Come on, boys. Um, so I want yeah, I, I, I really wanted, um, oh, God. That's a nice clearance. I, I wanted I wanted you to you know if if you're going to write a novel that that argues that the real hero's journey is the journey from strength to weakness you need to start from a place of great strength um, and in you know in the manic pixie dream boy genre um, 
the, I feel like the weakness of the character is, is never revealed, and um, and that he just sort of like flits in and out of the life of the woman. Um, and I really, I, I really tried hard to do the kind of the exact opposite of that in uh, in the Fault in Our Stars. So. Um, you know, yes, like he starts out ideal, idealized and romanticized, but hopefully he, you know, together he and Hazel uh, make a journey to a much more meaningful relationship. Um, and I think, you know, that's kind of like the point of the book. Um, so I couldn't, you know, you can't chart that journey unless you start from that place of, oh, isn't this guy cool and handsome and amazing? Um, so, yeah, that's what I was trying to do. And I don't know if I succeeded or not, but I know the oh, I was ready to be like, but I know this, the Swinnertown Swoodoo Poopers are going to succeed today against Middlesbrough, and then, no luck. Oh, I don't know what you guys are mad about. You're drawing against the, the massively famous Swindontown Swoodoo Poopers, one of the greatest teams in the history of the world. Um, so, uh, yeah, I really, I, I mean... You know, I, I, there are lots of criticisms of The Fault in Our Stars that I think are, are really, like, totally legitimate, um, as I've said many times before in Swoodly Pooper videos and elsewhere. But the two that I think are, are, are just kind of stupid are the um, Augustus Waters is a Manic Pixie Dream Boy criticism, which I just think is pretty... I just don't think it holds up, holds up very well. I just, like, I don't know. Books belong to their readers. They might be right, but... I don't see that. I, it's the exact opposite of what I was trying to do, and I think, like, for most for most readers, they've sort of felt like it was the exact... Oh, it has to be! And it is! He scores when he wants. He scores when he wants. Mr. Bostock, he scores when he wants. Look at that. Just right into the corner. I love his haircut, too. There's nothing I don't like about that guy. He's emerged as a star in the post-ball John Green Swoodley Pooper era, and the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers have come all the way back from 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Merrick, 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 Merrick! Oh, he wanted it. He was determined, and he was hardworking, but it came to nothing. Oh, it's because he doesn't own the means of production, not to sound like a Marxist. Actually, that sounds exactly like a Marxist. Um... Yeah, okay, so the other, the, other, the other one that I find completely uncompelling, the other criticism of the Fault in Our Stars that I find completely uncompelling is that, um, uh, is that teenagers don't talk like that, as if, like, novels aren't allowed to use heightened language. Like, tragic novels can't use heightened language, as if, like, like uh, it's like if you're reading Romeo and Juliet and you're like, teenagers don't talk like that. Oh, no shit. I didn't know. Oh, sorry, I cursed. Um, no, you don't have to bleep it. Um... I, I'm angry enough about it that you don't have to believe it. I just think it's the most ridiculous criticism. Like, Romeo and Juliet's first 14 lines to each other are, the, are a freaking sonnet. No one's ever like, oh, teenagers don't talk in freaking sonnets to each other. Really? I had no idea. It's like I, it's like I didn't think of that. They're like, I can tell that this book was written by a 35-year-old man. And I'm like, yeah, because you have access to the book cover. Um, yeah, of course, of course you can say that. But, like... Uh, you know, like that's that's what that's what a tra that's what tragic novels are. Like, there's no way to separate them from the way that they use heightened. La oh God, get up! The way that they use heightened language uh, to to make you to make you care and to make you invested and to create this like, you know. I, I hate the I hate the word hyper real, but I can't think of a different word. This hyper real, um, you know, sense of relationship with the characters and stuff. And like, I, I'm I'm very great. You know, like, look, I'm very. To be clear, I'm very lucky and grateful that, um, you know, the 3,000 Amazon reviews are, you know, 80% five-star reviews. And, like, I'm very lucky and grateful that so many people have responded so generously to the book and, like, worked, you know, gotten exactly what I was doing or exactly what I was trying to do and, like, read the book in the way that, like, I, I dearly hoped that it would be read. Like, I never ever imagined that so many people would read it so generously at all. I really didn't. But then, of course, you can do nothing but focus on the people who, who don't, um, as, is, as is, I think, human nature. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel bad about cursing. Um, I do sometimes curse in real life. Uh, Meredith just laughed out loud. Oh, God! Anything but this! Great tackle! Heroic, game-saving tackle! Oh, who was that brilliant man? We may never know because I didn't have time to look down at the right side of the screen. 
Um, here for the last 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and do what professional managers do when they're up one goal with 10 minutes remaining, which is that I'm going to uh, bring on an entirely different team. I'm going to bring on Jerry Coke. Um, then I'm going to have the midfield anchored by our striker, Leor Williamson. What? I'm just doing it. Shush. And then I'm going to... I almost... I feel like we need a, a, a slightly different cent... Oh, I'll bring on him. I feel... McShane hasn't been playing enough lately. Um, and we are a little tired in, in the defense, but I'm just going to... I'm just going to do this. these three quick changes. I really... What? Yeah. Let's just take our time. That's all right. You know, Judge is not a skinny man. And that's something I like. I like that the Swoodley Poopers can have many. It's a reminder that, like, uh, your BMI does not actually, is not actually the only way of calculating whether or not you're fit. Like, um, as I've become, I've been working out with a personal trainer, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. Oh, God. Please, anything but this. Oh, that guy is having a fantastic game. Oh, it's Silva, 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 Silva. Go. Go, Wordsworth. Go. You are an excellent poet. You can do it. You can do it. Go. It's such a good cross. And it's Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney has a soul. Almost. I almost got there. I almost had that. I was just, I had everything except for the soul. Um, have you, there's a great song um, that a Nerdfighter recorded that I, I recently came across called Hank Green is Not a Tenor, um, and it's just hilarious because it's true that in every one of Hank's songs he has one note that he just cannot hit, and um, he tries anyway, he writes the songs the way he wants to write them, and he gives it his all, and he doesn't get there, and there's something heroic about that. That's not a foul! It's not, I, if you give me a yellow card for being good looking, I disagree! Jerry Coke made a fantastic tackle. Let's look at it again. Oh, look at me get the ball. Look at the ball move when I touched it before I touched the man. Schmerg. This is completely illegitimate. If they score here, it's an illegitimate goal. I disagree with that goal. Oh, are you going to try to? Oh, he tried to get the ball, but he can't. He can't find it. He was trying to grab the ball to take it back because they're losing and they want to try to score one more. There, he finally got to it. Oh, he tried to get the ball, but he was stopped by the net. This is a fantastic game. The graphics, you know. Okay, we're just get, running into the corner, please, Wordsworth. Into the corner. That, ah. Yep, yep, take it nice and slow. Okay. We have to just make sure that they don't score here in the 90th minute. Should be relatively straightforward, but, you know, our defense, not always that great. What, is that the end of the game? Tell me it's the end of the game. Yes, congratulations to the Swoodley Poopers. Come back from 1-0 down to win 3-2 with goals from a wide variety of... So this year is really the year of um, that, that no star emerges. The team itself is the star. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.